Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. It's from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Good morning. Good morning. And today is like the uh, official, unofficial, how do you like to put that? Um, opening of the church. See, because usually the summer, everybody's away, everybody's traveling and, and things like that. And so then we turn around and we get to reopen the church. And so we're officially open mm -hmm. uh, with bulletins. Yes. Whoa. Okay. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur, for, mm -hmm. yes, for all the work on that. Um, I send Arthur the information. He, he puts it into format for me. So that's very nice of him. That's why we keep him around. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> but it does make it feel more like we're in church. You know, um, and so it's just a nice touch to have it back, back to normalcy, back to normalcy. So we do have a few announcements that we need to make. Um, Wednesday and Thursday are the Bible study. Anything you'd like to add or say? No, no. Okay. Okay. In October, we are going to take uh, part in the Socktober, the sock collection for children and men and women for those that are less fortunate, the homeless, and, and those that are in need. Anything on that? Um, just, it's called My Brother's Keeper, and we go to Camden while they're all of you shop on Black Friday, we go to Camden, we give out socks, we give out clothes, we give out, and we minister, we, we, whatever they need, we try to minister. We're still trying to get feedback back whether we can actually go there this year, because we couldn't last, right. but they still take whatever we collect, so. Okay, very good. That's the gist of it. Very good, very good. Um, October 8th, it will be the covered dish dinner in Hargrove Hall. Um, and October 12th, another one? I know, I know. Good you may not, grief. You may not need it because what I really need is next Sunday after church. Okay. I would like to have a meeting regarding um, the uh, yard sale. Right. And I'm trying to pull it together, but I need your help. So next Sunday after church will be a meeting to discuss, to see, get ideas, and because we're talking about, as the next bullet point says, November 5th and 6th are the dates we're talking about to have the yard sale, which is a would be a Friday afternoon and a So next Sunday, a, a, a meeting about the yard sale. Yeah, immediately yeah. following church. So. Yeah, okay. And nobody better is, I'm going to lock them. We'll lock them. <laughs> Betty's locking us in. Except for you, you, you I know you have it. I have to escape, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. there's three people, that's it. That's it. <laughs> three of us are allowed to escape. Thank you, thank you, boy. But, yes. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, okay. And um, there was a, um, we got a thank you note. There was a, uh, a donation made. Um, if you remember um, me announcing about the St. John's United Methodist Church in Fordville, that it had all the damage done to their cemetery, their, 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 their worship center, everything. Uh, vandals got in there because, what, they're the only Native American congregation in New Jersey, and the place was trashed. So anyway, um, uh, I'd like to read this to you. Making sacrifices, big and small, giving willingly, going all out, putting others first, that's just you serving God, being you, and it really makes a difference. And this is addressed to the uh, Budtown family, Budtown UMC family. We always thank God for you. Your prayers and your gift helps us understand how much we are loved, even when the world feels so ugly sometimes. Thank you and thank the church, Cindy Mosley, uh, on behalf of the St. John's United Methodist Church. So, uh, it was very touching. They've been moved. So, you see, they may not know us, but they do now. <laughs> and they know that we are together in worshiping our God. Are there any other announcements that we need to make at this time? Well, okay, seeing none, which is surprising. Mm -hmm. um, let us join our voices together and... Oh, there is one? Well, uh, first, you forgot we had a bullet thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, okay. Ah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we have a new couple back here. <laughs> we have uh, 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 Edward and, and Peggy King. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so then we get to sing to Connie and Dick, who is watching us at home. See, so we even get to sing to Dick because his birthday is within the week. And then we get to sing. Happy anniversary to Joe and Connie. And next week you get some too. The other kings get some too. <laughs> so.
and, and, and he's put up with you this long. Ooh. Oh, I knew it. Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. See? <laughs> well, okay. Now, getting back to where we were. All right. Well, stand if you wish and open up your faith we sing to page 2119, where the spirit of the Lord is. And Emma's coming up to help me lead the singing because Bill's on vacation this week. So that's 2119 in the faith we sing. Once or twice? Just once. Please join me in the call to worship, which you'll find printed in your bulletin. Who is wise and understanding among us? Those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread. Those who do not sit in the seat of sorrows. Our delight is in the teachings of the Holy One, meditating day and night on the word of God. As we draw near to God, God draws near to us. Amen. Please remain standing, if you wish, and open your hymnals to page 159. Lift high the cross. We're officially open. We're getting the spirit rolling. How's that?
right, sing it out. You may be seated. And please join me in the opening prayer, which you'll find printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of wisdom and grace, you call us to be servants to all. Without word and word, let us to delight in your word and to live in your peace, that we may be known as your people. Amen. Our act of praise can be found on page 738 of your hymnal, and it's Psalm 1. That's 738. Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on God's law, they are They are like trees planted by streams of water that yield their fruit in season, and their leaves do not wither. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. May God bless the reading of his word. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> All right, I'll get this over with and then we'll do the reading. How's that? Mm -hmm. oh. A kindergarten teacher was observing her classroom as the children drew pictures. Oh. The teacher would occasionally walk around and see each child's artwork. As she approached one little girl who was working especially hard, she asked, what the drawing was. Well, the little girl told her, I'm drawing God. I should have changed my voice. I'm drawing God. <laughs> but sweetie, the teacher replied, no one knows what God looks like. Automatically, the little girl continued drawing and said, well, they certainly will in a minute. <laughs> Okay, now we're ready for you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The epistle lesson for today is from James 3, 13 to 18, and James 4, 3, 7, and 8. 
two kinds of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. You ask and do not receive, because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts double-minded. God bless the reading of his word. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to uh, get this all back together again. And uh, so, because of that, I thought I would play Majesty. And she took it from me. Uh -huh. I got here first. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> but she's very flexible, so that's a good thing. Yes. Yes, we work well together. Mark 
Mark 9, 30 through 37, and please stand if you wish. This is where Jesus again foretells of his death and resurrection. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, while you're standing, if you are able to continue, please open your hymnals to page 707. The hymn of promise. I figured uh, <laughs> since last we, we, we had our anniversary and wanted to thank everyone, by the way, for all the cards, the Facebook messages. It was great, and we appreciated that. But uh, I figured since that was Patty's favorite hymn, I better put it in there on our official opening. So. <laughs> So, all right, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I titled this, Don't Be Afraid to Ask. We heard in gospel lesson, Jesus is explaining to his disciples, starting to 
explain to his disciples what is going to take place of him. Well, first of all, the disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying. They had a block of return. Okay. And they were afraid to ask him what it was that he was trying to say. Now, if you remember, Jesus always talked in parables, in riddles, where the disciples would turn around and, uh-huh, okay, I, I, I get it. They didn't get it, but they wanted to, they wanted Jesus to believe that they got what he was saying. You understand what I'm saying, right? Sure, we do. Yeah, and that was, they didn't want to come off as if they were ignorant or stupid. They were the 12 chosen disciples to follow Jesus. They want to be on the top of their game. But we don't always understand what's being now, going through these classes in seminary, if I turned around and I started using eschatological terms, you like that word? <laughs> okay? And I said it right, too. I practiced it in the mirror. I knew I was going to get it. But if I started using all these eschatological terms and where you would have to get out the thesaurus to figure out what it was I'm trying to say. Are you going to get the meaning of it? No. No. So Jesus tried to talk on their level. Now understand, that's no insult to anyone. You were talking about fishermen. You were talking about laborers. You were talking about that's what other parts of the civilization, of the civilization would consider the scourge of life. The uneducated. That's who the disciples were. They weren't, they weren't students of anything. They were what they would call the low life. The pond scum. Let's put it, you know, let's put it in, 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 in more recent terms, you know. That algae that grows on top of the stagnant water. That was who the disciples were to a lot of people, but not to Jesus. Jesus turned around and said, No, you all have a purpose. You all have a reason. And I want you to be here with me and follow me. To the end of my time on earth. But was it really his end of the time of his time? No. Is Jesus still on this earth today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I gotta tell you, I I, I, I recently read um, an article and uh, I didn't print it out, but I got the gist of it. Someone had asked the question, who is the more powerful angel? Is it Lucifer or is it Michael? Good question, right? Real good question. And the guy that answered the question was spot on. He said, the power is God. The power is God. Okay? God before God no, there was nothing but God. That includes Lucifer and Michael. The two archangels. 
So who's more powerful? God is. Now, how they explained it was Lucifer, Lucifer tricks people by deception. That's the only power Satan has. That's the only power that Lucifer has is deception. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Come on over, and I'll prove it to you. Come over and look at how green this grass is. That's Lucifer, because that grass isn't any greener than the grass is over here. All right, blue for the carpet, but... Um, <laughs> Lucifer, when he was in heaven with God, okay, he used deception on a band of angels. And God turned around and said, those that want to follow Lucifer, by all means, go ahead. I still love you. God is love. So you go ahead. And you follow him. Those who want to stay with me, stay here with me. So, the angels separated. And God turned around and said to Michael, okay, now it is time for you and your angels to gather up these angels that are fallen, that are following Lucifer, and send them straight to hell. So, the only power that Michael had was what God had given him. God is the ultimate power, the ultimate creator. Now, can God come in tomorrow and straighten out the problems of this world? Absolutely. But Jesus was given dominion over everything because he was willed it by the Father. So Jesus is still here on this earth today. You may not see him. You may not see the changes, but he's here, and he is at work. Only good things will come. Trust me. Today we're proving it because we're back together. With... Bulletins! <laughs> Jesus is at work. Only good things are going to come. But just be careful because the one that is the trickiest in deception is also here working. Don't be deceived. Listen to what God is telling you to do. Don't be deceived. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I got that one out. <laughs> I feel better now. So now we do go to our great Lord in prayer. First of all, um, no, I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, but... Prayers are being answered. Prayers are definitely being answered. And I would like to point out the fact that Mary is back with us. Our prayers are being answered. Amen. I told you I didn't want to embarrass you, but <laughs> on the other hand, I had to let loose, you know? Absolutely. 
Amen. Amen. And we're happy to have you back, on. Yes. You've graced us. You really have. Um, now, um, we want to keep in our prayers Dick and Kathy. Um, Kathy's cousin, what's her name? Linda. Linda. Linda, and she had a last name about, oh, that long. But <laughs> Kathy said, don't worry about it. God will know who it is you're talking about. Kathy's cousin. Farfella. Farfella. Okay. Yeah, say Linda Farfella. <laughs> Farfella. So just spelling is spelling is optional. Um, um, it's her cousin who who was diagnosed um, with pancreatic cancer, um, and we were praying for Linda. And we we you know had on our prayer list, and we had mentioned her a couple times, and um, she went back to the doctor and the doctor said um, the pancreatic cancer is gone yeah the pancreatic cancer is gone but let's look at the doctor and he goes but your liver enzymes are up and they did a CAT scan and the cancer was spread so Okay. Anyone else that we need to? Yes. We need to keep past him in our prayers. <laughs> he had his last equation on Friday, so his back is doing better. Yes. But on Friday, he also had an episode where he couldn't catch his breath. That's happened three times this weekend and scared the jabebies out of him. So just prayers for your pastor. He's on four medicines, and but the doctor would not see him in the office because he has a fall. Yeah, a butyrol. Yeah. And a mentin for an antibiotic in case yeah. he decides to get that out. Prednisone. Yeah, so just prayers for your pastor. He doesn't ask for prayers for himself, but it was a pretty well, scary weekend, so he needs all the prayers he can get. That's why when you hear me cut out on some of the singing, it's because I'm like... <laughs> I'm panting like a dog. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for that. Thank you for all the prayers. Better, getting better, yes. Yeah. That'll Bernie get better. Has so much. It's it's it, 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 it'll get better too. You know, not to worry, not to worry. Um, and we want to have prayers for our sister Penny there, um, for her back. I know the feeling. Yes. In, in in spirit and in truth, yes. <laughs> oh, well, we want to thank you for all that you have done around the church. Now, Penny was the one that was overtaking care of our grass and, and everything else here. But because of the arthritis problem that she's having in her back, she did have to give up uh, cutting the grass. So there's other folks that have volunteered to step up. So. Yeah, and she wanted to wait until next year. Like, no. No. no, no, you're in pain. Yeah, exactly, no. exactly, exactly. So, you know, um, so we want to, yeah, again, we appreciate everything you've done for us. We'll still do the garden. Okay, okay. And we appreciate you still doing that. You don't want to get those flowers mowed down. No. I know he's. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If he goes out and sprays the whole yard with vinegar, we know that we're in trouble. Um, okay. Also, um, something to prayerfully consider, if anyone would like to. Um, Betty has been keeping our facility clean for a number of years. 
And, you know, it, it, she, she comes in once a week and makes sure that it's vacuumed and dusted and all the paper products are stocked up and things like that. But it's getting to where Betty would like to prayerfully consider retiring from. Right. Yes. Yeah, oh. Actually, I do have some help. Okay. But if anybody else would like to help, okay. um, see me, but um, somebody on that side over there said that they would, they would help. Oh, so, good, good, good. Um, and that, that in itself, if we do every other week, we're okay. But if somebody else wants to step up, just let me know. Okay. So, so it's kind of, it will be better. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, you know. So yes. Um, yes, Tommy. She's still struggling with it. Yeah. Um, Rick and Peg Crook. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, they're, they had lost their son, and um, he was their only son. They have a daughter, but, um, and what, what, what kind of brought it home a little bit was um, Rick and Peg Crook are members of Broad Street over in Burlington, which is our home church, you know, where we came from. And uh, I, had a, I, I had the opportunity of being, for a stint, of being a youth advisor. And Rick was one of my boys, so he was he was in he was in my youth group, and so it uh, yeah it, it it touched a lot of people his loss, uh, but he had been he had been very sick, and it was actually a blessing in disguise, but yeah Rick and Peg could use our support, so yeah. Uh, Pat Sarda, who came to our. Picnic. Yes. She went home, and I think it was the next day or the day after she was in the hospital overnight. Oh boy. So she was having blood pressure issues mm. and not sure all the issues, but she's back home. But she, she needs some prayer. She's had some yeah. Just I mean, being married to George is. Well, is that, should do it. Yeah. <laughs> that would raise anybody's blood pressure, yeah. Uh, but uh, I hope she's. I hope they tune in and watch sometimes, because this would be great, you know. Uh, George will be sitting there. Hey, you got yeah. me, huh? Yeah. Um, but now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we want to keep uh, Margaret in our prayers. She's. Mary and my buddy visited her Thursday, and we're going back again in October. I'm thinking, you know, we're going to continue this. Yes. Uh, yes, it was so good. I don't like plums. Oh. It had plums on it. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. Get the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cover dish dinner. Yeah. We got a cover dish dinner coming up real soon. <laughs> oh. Well, you, you, you send her our best. And she Tell her we do miss her. We do. Yeah. Poor Arthur, he's having some issues. Yes. We won't go into it, but he's having some issues. Yes. Yeah. 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 I stopped in the other day at Sea Lynn. Okay. Uh, Carol Ann and Danny framed the picture for him that he wanted. Oh. We, 
we certainly miss him too, you know? We do. Uh, we miss everyone. Uh, wish we could uh, fill all these empty pews again. You know, we were, we were starting to do, we were starting to do pretty good. And then that lousy COVID hit and made us shut down. And now we're kind of paying the price, you know? And I can understand some people are still afraid to come back. I can understand that. I fully understand that. Um, and, you know, but folks, when you feel like coming back, Come on, come on back. We got plenty of room. We got extra chairs to set up if we need them. We're we're good for the we're good to go. We've even got room for overflow. <laughs> hey, I just made a poem. I just made a rhyme. Yes, we're good to go. Overflow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I just have a quick phrase. Yes. Um, I consider September my anniversary month since okay. the first Sunday I walked through that door and first met with the council who I don't know what to make of you but <laughs> um, and you still don't right yeah. and it's been six years and wow. so I'm praising God thanking God for all of you and yes <laughs> and you notice you're chained you're chained here you can't I know. I know. We're the same anniversary month, actually. You came in September too. No, it was October. Well. Yeah, close. October first. Same, so, same, same year. Same year. Correct. Same year. I think Trish's been here a week or two, and then you came. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Close. yeah. I, you know, it was. I. I. I got to tell you, it was kind of funny because I got a phone call that said, uh, you know, when when I agreed to. Take the appointment. I gotten a call from somebody on PPR. <laughs> Not mentioning any names. <laughs> and 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 it was put. Our accompanist wants to know um, because you're coming in and you're a new pastor and she's never met you and stuff like that. Is she still going to have a job? <laughs> you're kidding me, right? Like, I'm going to sit down and play these things? I don't think so. <laughs> well, since Betty's going somewhere and Penny's going somewhere, I mean, anybody's welcome that wants to, yeah, just say it. Not they're, they're not going they're anywhere. They're not going anywhere. We're still here. <laughs> not many people can fill your shoes. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Her, right? Her, her shoes are too small for me to fit in anyway, so I can. <laughs> Thank God for the. See, there you go. There you go. Anyway, so. It's a big phrase. Yes, 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 it is. And uh, happy anniversary. <laughs> Same to you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Eddie had a setback last week. Oh. He was doing really good. And he was going to be to the doctor's Thursday. And he was going to be to the doctor's Thursday. To ask him if he could drive. He woke up Saturday. Do they, do they know what's causing it, though? He had a detached retina. Okay. And okay. how that happened, he does not know, because he said he didn't do anything to it. You, you know, some things you don't have to. It just, it just happens. It's weird. You know, it's just... That's the only eye he has. Yeah. The other one has been blinded for years. Yeah. Well... We'll keep them in our prayers, and uh, in six months. He's still waiting for the other surgery has to be done. Yeah, yeah. Can't do that till fifty nine Street. Yeah. Well, he's lucky. He's still, he's still allowed to go into the doctor's office. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> we're not going to go there on that. <laughs> Anyone else? No. Well, then let's go to our 
Let's go to our Lord in prayer. God, you have given us a great gift, a gift that many of us may not consider to be a gift, but it is just the same. And that is the gift of thought, the gift of knowing right from wrong, The gift of knowing if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably because it isn't. So when that great deceptor comes and tries to pull his upheaval on us, God, give us the strength, give us the knowledge, give us the encouragement to stand up to him and say, oh no, Satan, like your son said, get behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. Get out of my face. Let me walk in the light of my God and my risen Savior. Let us continue to walk that walk and not be deceptive. Now God We come to you with so many concerns and praises. We ask you to be with Kathy's cousin, Linda, as she battles this war with cancer. And we ask you to be with all those that are battling that dreaded disease and any diseases that they may have. May they be cured or brought to peace and comfort that God only you can do. And we ask you to just wrap your loving arms around them and heal them. Let them feel your love. We ask you to be with Dick and Kathy as as they continue to get stronger and they continue to try to get healthy again. We ask you to be with our friends Rick and Peg Crook as they still struggle with the loss of their son Richie. We just ask that you bring comfort to them. We ask you to be with Margaret and bring her a comfort, knowing that, yes, she still misses Heinz. And yes, we all do. But God, let your love warriors, your prayer warriors, go and comfort her. Give her a hug and make her feel like she's someone. We ask you to be with Pat as she battled with uh, health issues. We ask you to be with Arthur as he too has some issues that he has to work through. And we just ask God that you Protect him and and protect them. Protect Pat. Keep them up strong. Don't let them lose their faith. And God, we know you'll bring them through. We ask you to be with Linton as he weakens but still keeps his spirit. And God, we just thank you for that. He's a good man and he deserves to keep that spirit and upbeat joy. We ask you to be with Ed as he still awaits surgery but continues to have setbacks with his eye issue. Just ask you to Keep him patient. 
as you work in his life. But God, we have praises too. We praise you, O oh God, for strengthening and, and, and healing Mary so that she could come back to be within your flock here where we have missed her and we know she missed us. And we're so glad that she's able to be back with us again. And then we thank you, O oh God, for Trish and her talent that she shares with this congregation for six years. She has brought your joy and your peace through the keyboards of these two musical instruments. We just thank you, O oh God, for her coming to us and staying with us and continuing to stay with us and will never retire until, oh, we'll discuss that part later. But, O oh God, we just thank you for all the, all the gifts that you give us. We thank you for all the miracles that you have, have, have shown us. You have given to us. And we thank you, O oh God, for the greatest gift of all. And that is your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who, when asked, was not afraid to answer, but gave these words to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It also comes a time where, and this is something we haven't done in quite some time either. Um, I noticed some people walking in going, uh, where's the fleet? Well, I will invite the ushers to please come forward and assist us with the gathering of today's tithes and offerings. God, we ask you to bless the gifts, bless the gifts. strengthen your church, your world, 
and your kingdom. All honor and glory is yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Open your hymnals to page 261. And yeah, you can dance if you want. What's that song? You can dance if you want to. Oh, okay. Oh, yes.
but our service <laughs> to others has just begun to win the world. Be in service to your loved ones and to your neighbors. It makes the world of difference. We have the proof. Go in peace, and may the love of God go with you all. Amen.